Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And as we all have kind of found out here since the launch of Shadowlands is that things are quite a bit different uh, from the beta a few weeks in and after some pretty significant changes to covenants and classes overall. So I thought it would be important uh, to give an update on my opinion here for the classes and how they currently rank in 3v3 on the ladder. This is for healers specifically. So if you're interested in picking up a healer or wondering where I think your current healer is sitting in terms of power and potential uh, this is going to be the video for you and a lot has changed and I think this is going to be a bit of a surprise uh, for most of you out there and possibly a few of you are going to disagree with me I'm going to try and persuade you uh, otherwise but taking into account the viability of a healer overall on the ladder um, it's possible composition options and pools, it's mana regeneration, it's cooldown management, and it's ability to deal with the overwhelming amount of burst damage that's currently in the game at the moment. So uh, if you were watching any tier lists prior to this point, uh, just to get things started here, you would have probably seen Discipline Priest listed as the best healer in most places. And I think that this is still true for compositions like Rogue Mage Priest specifically. And this composition is definitely overwhelming and quite powerful at the moment. Probably the best composition uh, in my mind. But the downside of the Discipline Priest is that it does not have good mana regeneration. In fact, it's one of the few healers that will have it as a common problem where it does run out of mana and it runs out of steam and can lose games because of this um, due to some nerfs also applied to the class in terms of its power word shield absorption effects um, i think that it's fallen down a tier for myself personally overall if you were going to pick up this spec and try to push rating with it you could run things like ret warrior priest uh, and do well with it but i think discipline priest is slightly lower now not by much not by much but i think i would put it onto the a tier overall uh, down from the S tier. Uh, moving forward onto the Holy Paladin. This is a healer that I think a lot of players were saying, oh, it's clunky. Holy Light's really slow now. Infusion of Light doesn't work on it. It lost all of its BFA borrowed power with infinite cooldowns. It's going to be in the dumpster. It's going to be a just total failure spec. It's not going to work in Arena. Everyone was really worried about Holy Paladin. Um, but with how high burst damage is at the moment, uh, surprisingly, Holy Paladin is a great healer to have currently as it has a lot of immunity cooldowns. It's ultimate sacrifice, divine shield, blessing of protection, these immediate responses. It also has just a ton of instant healing. It can just top a target without casting uh, quite easily by generating holy power for word of glory, talenting to have word of glory proc another word of glory, and you can effectively avoid casting almost entirely and if you do need to cast you can use your honor talent divine favor to make yourself immune to being interrupted for that one time that you need to cast aggressively it also has tools that returning to the game that i think maybe were underrated things like aura mastery which provides immunity to interrupt and silence effects to your team uh, when concentration aura is currently active very powerful at the moment with casters being able to just blast targets down I'm um, looking at Convoke the Spirits here when I say that. Uh, I think that Paladin is versatile. It can play with Melee Cleave. It can play with Casters. It can play with Rogue Mage as well. It has the entire thing. It doesn't have the weakness that Discipline Priest has of running out of mana. Um, and this is why I actually think that Holy Paladin at the moment on the ladder, in my assessment, is the best healer. And that's uh, this is what I'm saying, that there's going to be some... what. <laughs> best healer um having played with it played against it and seen the variety that i've seen from holy paladin i actually do think that it's currently as an overall healer better uh, than discipline priest currently on the ladder and moving forward we've got holy priest this is another one that i think people were expecting to do a lot better than it actually ended up doing i don't think that holy priest is in a terrible god-awful position it's not a fury warrior it's not a demo lock uh, you can feel fortunate for that. I think that it's a healer that works. It still has immunity cooldown tools um, like the Guardian Angel to be able to save a target right before it dies. Uh, and a lot of instant healing with the Miracle Worker buff allowing you to serenity and heal more instantly. It's just not as frequent as the Holy Paladin. And you have big mana problems. You know, I said Discipline Priest was the only here with mana problems. I was wrong there. The Holy Priest also is a healer that has mana problems. It basically at the moment it seems like there's a couple of healers that just don't run out of mana and then other healers that are balanced around their mana region actually affecting them so at the moment holy priest is one of those healers where it's probably just it's actually just balanced so it actually runs out of mana 
Um, but and it has good toolkit to heal through the damage. I don't think it's a total failure. It's not a D tier healer at the moment, but if it's going to try and compete with something like Holy Paladin that also brings damage output uh, and a lot of instant crowd control on a lower cooldown, uh, it's going to start to struggle. I think that it's still... <sighs> This is, I'm debating on if I want to put it on the average. I feel like it's a little bit below average. It's hard. This is a hard one to assess again because it's not very popular. I've only seen it a couple of times. I've maybe played with it once as well. Um, it didn't feel totally terrible. Um, so if you're really de dead set on playing the Holy Priest, I think it does fit into the meta and you could make it work. But I'm a little bit sold on putting it on average, which should be about the B tier. Uh, I think it's slightly below average. It's like a C+. Plus. It, it's almost... It's almost there for an average healer. It's just that the, the best ones are actually so good that it's tough to uh, it's tough to put it up in comparison to those other options. Now, Mistweaver Monk, this is another healer that really didn't receive any changes. It lost some of the borrowed power like the Azerite traits to reduce its cooldown on Life Cocoon. And often I just see Life Cocoon not matter. A, a lot of the defensive cooldowns that a Mistweaver Monk has, even if they activate them on a target at 100% health, will die through uh to the burst damage and this is the major drawback of the mistweaver the other drawback is there's basically no offense they reduce the cooldown on paralyze to 30 seconds which is good for your crowd control and your setup window so you can play with things like wind walkers uh enhancement shamans uh and try and set up these big burst window one shots but you're, you yourself aren't really going to be adding too much in terms of damage, and you will have moderate mana problems. Not as bad as Discipline Priest or Holy Priest, but they're not. You're not immune to mana loss like Restoration Shaman, for example. So for me, Mistweaver is probably just about average, slightly better than Holy Priest, and this is likely because I see it a little bit more frequently uh, than Holy Priest specifically. But I, it's just about average. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect. Fantastic results from it, although there are some misweavers making it work. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder to make it work. And you may likely be more frustrated, as I said, because of burst damage cooldowns being so prevalent. And your cooldowns, even if you're reacting, even if you're proactive to getting them out in time, probably going to die through them and be frustrated more often than not. So at the moment, it's just it's not fitting there uh, too powerfully. It's just about average. Now, Resto Druid, this is another healer that I think was giving was given a lot of high rankings uh, in the beta, and the game was a lot slower in the beta. Uh, also, legendaries aren't available just yet. I know a lot of Resto Druids just finally got their Swiftman legendary uh, to try it out. I have seen some compositions work for the Restoration Druid, but more often than not, I see frustration from people playing Restoration Druid. Uh, and I think it's specifically because, much like the Mistweaver Monk, the defensive cooldowns that you have, like Iron Bark or Bark Skin, can often not matter. Uh, for example, if you don't have a Trinket and you fight Rogue Mage and Rogue Mage attacks you, I don't know if you, even if you pre Iron Bark, Bark Skin, and we're in bear form, you would survive uh, the amount of damage available to that. It can be very difficult. Nature's Swiftness is really the one redeeming spell to the rest of Druid at the moment, having returned, allowing you to just top a target every minute with Soul to Forest, which is a great utility. I think this is what actually enables it a lot. But if you're going to play Restoration Druid, you're going to want to pair up with Enhancement Shaman, Windwalker, Enhancement Shaman, Warrior. And then on the flip side of that, possibly Shadow Priest, uh, Warlock or Shadow Priest, Mage or Shadow Priest Ellie, like these caster teams that can help you peel or melee hybrids that can help you heal because you don't really. Uh, and your cooldowns are kind of poopy. So you're not going to feel as amazing as I think a lot of people were expecting uh, Restoration Druid to feel. In my mind, I think it's about average overall on the 3v3 arena ladder. If you were to just pick up a Druid and try and find a group, I think you're going to struggle a bit. And then when you actually get into it, you're going to be very limited on your composition options. I don't think it's as powerful as a lot of people were anticipating. I think it's better than Mistweaver Monk, which is why it's going to the left of Mistweaver. Everything to the left is what I think is the best on a tier. And then Mistweaver is worse than Resto Druid. Um, but they both suffer from the same problems. However, Resto Druid overall can deal with them more frequently. Also, just having bear form if you're a target is a lot better than Mistweaver, where if you get stunned and swapped to, you get dropped. Um, but so it's better than Mistweaver, but I'd say average at the moment in 3v3 Arena. And finally, we've got Restoration Shaman. This is another one that I think had a lot of debate on how powerful actually is it going to be. Uh, the main factor is much like Holy Paladin, all of its healing is effectively instant. Uh, with Riptide and the Necrolord Covenant, you can avoid casting quite a lot. And it just doesn't run out of mana. 
it, it's very similar to Holy Paladin. The mana regeneration on it just seems to be slightly overtuned. It's a really big factor um, because if you're able to play a solid defense game, uh, you'll be able to extend matches and outlast anyone uh, in the game, which is what I think is a major power point for it specifically. Some downsides are that cooldowns like Earthenwall Totem, which before used to just be like a team ice block in BFA. If you had Earthenwall Totem, nobody in your team was dying. Now it doesn't really matter because spells hit you for 10 to 15k, and if you reduce that by a small amount, it's still probably 9.5k damage uh, hitting you on a 20,000 health pool. So... Earthenwall is going to make you struggle a little bit, but you have big recovery cooldowns like Ascendance to top yourself and being able to use Riptide and kind of max range teams and focus on that disruption play. Uh, this is why I think that it's not as good as Holy Paladin, specifically as if you were just going to pick it up and try and make it work on the ladder. It's slightly worse, but not by much. I think it's still an S-tier healer at the moment, especially if, again, if you're somebody who wants to just pick something up and get in into the games and have some variety of comps. You can play with Spellcasters. You can play with Melee Cleaves. You can play with Melee and Caster. You have a lot of options. That's another bonus to the Restoration Shaman specifically, which is why I think it's deserving of the S-tier uh, spot, but worse than Holy Paladin at the moment in my assessment. Now, opinions could vary here, right? If you're a European player versus a North American player, I see Holy Paladin teams in Europe struggling more because there's just a higher prevalence of Rogue Mage, and Rogue Mage specifically is very hard for Holy Paladin. So if you're in Europe, it, it is easily the case that Resto Shaman would be better than Holy Paladin. But in North America, where Rogue Mage isn't as prevalent, I have noticed that Holy Paladin is doing a lot better uh, than Resto Shaman specifically or Discipline Priest because it's a bunch of melee cleaves uh, more often than not. So take that into account that EU versus NA uh, is, a, is a big factor because there's just this, I don't know why, but over time it's NA players play melee cleave. I don't know if we're just more smork and EU likes to play more rogue mage. Maybe it's big brain. I don't know, but there is that difference. This is my assessment from the North American ladder so far, and I hope that it was helpful to you. If you agree or disagree, please leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say about the healers currently in Shadowlands after that massive wave of changes. If you liked the video, please leave it with a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to the channel it's absolutely free and it's just going to let you know when my videos go live so if you want to stay up to date with the changes coming in as who knows if they're going to just massively overhaul anything at this point i wasn't expecting uh the changes that we got so uh, anything could happen really and i do my best to always upload it as soon as it happens in real time so that you're always in the know and in the now and able to get the gameplay and success that you ultimately deserve check out some of my other videos i'll have them linked above and other than that i'll see you in the next video